cut. You guys are terrible. Where's the passion, the flow? You're just jumping around. What do I have to do to get some decent dancers around here? And where's my coffee? Uh, here you go, sir. Ah, uh, perhaps we could be of service. What? Who are you guys? How'd you even get in here? We're ninja, I mean dancers. We're dancers, we're dancers now. Oh yes, we are the ninjancers. Oh, okay, I guess. You've got to be better than these clowns. Show me what you got. Oh, I don't know why I signed up for this. And action! Oh wow, are you getting this? You guys are amazing! Hey everyone, Jason here. Today we are going to take a look at the Lego Dragon Dance set and the changes that I made to it to smooth out the motion of the dragon. To start with, this isn't actually the official LEGO set. Since it is only available in the Asia Pacific region, I wasn't able to buy one. But thankfully, LEGO does provide the instructions for their sets for free to download from their website. And I just built my own copy using pieces that I had on hand. And leading up to the release of this set, I was really excited to see how the mechanism worked and how the motion of the dragon was. So when I turned the crank for the first time, I have to say I was actually a little bit underwhelmed with how clunky it was. And that is what prompted me to see if I could build my own version of the mechanism to smooth out the motion of the dragon. First we're going to take a look at the official mechanism and as you can see it's just a single crankshaft running through the center of the base. And there's a cam that sits underneath the support of each of the dragon segments. And as you can see, they are offset from the one in front of it by 90 degrees. And that's how we get this wave that travels down the length of the dragon's body. If we take a closer look at this style of cam, we'll see that it only really engages with the support through half of its rotation. From this position through 180 degrees, it raises the support and then lowers it again. But for the next 180 degrees, as the cam travels underneath, the support just rests on the crankshaft. And this is how we get this kind of clunky result of the motion in the finished model. So the first thing I tried was just to replace all the cams with a more continuously engaging cam. And for that I'm just using these small crankshaft pieces. And all that needed to be changed was at the bottom of each support, we can just build up a little extrusion here using a one by one round plate and a one by one round tile. And that kind of fits into the gap between the two crankshaft pieces. This cam is continuously engaged with the support. And if we connect these together, we can really see the difference between them as I rotate the crank. They both have the same vertical travel, but the one on the left is much smoother than the original. So I built another little prototype stand using the new style of cams on a central crankshaft and I turned the crank for the first time and I still wasn't actually that satisfied with the motion. Even though it is smoother than in the original model, it's still not that flowing smooth motion that I had envisioned in my head and that I was really trying to achieve. And this all stems from the fact that each of the cams is oriented at 90 degrees offset from the one in front of it. As a result, we get two full cycles of a sine wave represented along the full length of the dragon's body. Which means that for each full cycle of the sine wave, there's only four segments of the dragon's body representing that curve. Which actually isn't that many data points to represent the curve. And it's kind of like looking at a very pixelated image. You kind of just lose all the detail. Especially when you rotate the crank pretty quickly. It's really hard to see that curve propagating along the length of the dragon's body. So what I really wanted to do is have all eight segments of the dragon's body represent one cycle of that sine wave. And in order to achieve that, what we need to do is actually orient each cam at 45 degrees offset from the one in front of it instead of 90 degrees. Unfortunately, LEGO axles have a plus-shaped cross-section, which means that whenever you're sliding anything onto it, you can only do it in one of four orientations. So it's really easy to offset cams, for example, by 90 degrees from each other. So I had to get a little bit creative, and what I ended up doing was to create two separate crankshafts, so that this crankshaft controls the body segments in the odd positions, and this crankshaft controls the body segments in the even positions. 
And that way for each of the crankshafts, they can have cams that are offset by 90 degrees from the one in front of it. But the two crankshafts themselves are 45 degrees out of phase with each other. And unlike mounting the cams on an axle, putting these two drive shafts 45 degrees out of phase with each other is trivial. Since I'm transferring the motion between them using a tooth gears, each tooth on these gears represents 45 degrees. So all I have to do is disengage this gear. Whoops. I disengaged it a little too much. Rotate the axle by 45 degrees and re-engage the gear. And now these two drive axles are 45 degrees out of phase with each other. And as a result, each cam is 45 degrees offset from the cam that is controlling the body segment in front of it. And as a result, we get all eight segments of the dragon's body representing a single cycle of that sine wave. And at least in my opinion, it is much easier to see that shape of the curve as it travels down the dragon's body. And when I first saw the pre-release images of this set, this is what I envisioned the motion would be, which is why I was a little bit disappointed when I built the official set to begin with. If you're lucky enough to own this set and would like to make the same modifications to it, I have created building instructions for how to do that. You can find them over at jkbrickworks.com as usual. As always, thanks for watching. Keep on building. Happy Chinese New Year, and I will see you next time.